Okay, this video is going to look at how you can use a program called a sounds card oscilloscope and another program you should have already on your laptop called Logger Pro to capture sound and to then analyze that sound. So this first part will actually look at the process of capturing the sound because it's a little bit fiddly. Basically you need two programs. The first one is this one here, 16-bit FFT scope, very catchy name, I know. Um, now that's a free program you can download online and there will be a link to that on our Admodo page. So it's basically a very simple oscilloscope that uses the sound card in your computer. Um, it doesn't have the high frequency capability that the oscilloscope we have in the lab does. It's pretty much useless beyond about 50 kilohertz. But that's fine if you're just dealing with sound frequencies because as we remember, sound goes from 20 hertz up to about 20,000 at most. Anything beyond that we can't hear it so it doesn't matter. So basically you fire this guy up, you hit enter, and as you can see on the video you start to see a trace that moves up and down as sound is being fed into it. You'll also notice as well is that the x-axis here goes from 0 to 100 and that's in milliseconds so it can ca capture at best, at most rather, 100 milliseconds of, of time so that's one tenth of a second. Now at the moment what I'm seeing is fairly um, compact, it's not really taking up much of the screen so what I might do is just go up to view and keep talking so there's some sound going into it and choose auto range Y and then you can see that, oh it's probably a bit too much, maybe talk a bit quieter, there we go. You can see that now it takes up a bit more of the screen, it's easier to see. So the idea is to use this to capture sound so you have a microphone plugged into the microphone jack on the computer, like my computer is right now, and you use the input from that into the oscilloscope to capture the sound itself. So I'm going to make a sound, and then when I'm ready, I'm going to hit enter, and that will capture that sound and stop it, the trace moving on the oscilloscope. So here goes. Okay, so I've hit enter and you can see that the sound I produced by blowing through a whistle has been captured on the screen and now it's ready to be analysed. <coughs> now the program we want to analyse it in is called Logger Pro. You should have it on your computer already. If you go to the Start menu, All Programs, go down the bottom, choose Vernier Software and then Logger Pro. Now in an ideal world I could basically just paste all of that data straight into here. Unfortunately, it gets a little bit more fiddly than that, and that is because we want to be able to analyze this, find its frequency, basically. We can use Logger Pro to find the frequency of this sound wave. The problem becomes is Logger Pro is expecting you to put your data in in the form of seconds for time rather than milliseconds. But the data as it is at the moment, if we put it straight in, would be in milliseconds, you get a dodgy answer. So basically we have to do an intermediate step with Excel. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, but it's the best way that I know of doing it. So here's the, the image I captured on the screen. I actually want to take that, turn it into a list of data. So I go up to Edit, choose Copy, and here comes the, the tricky part, or the fiddly part rather. Open up Excel, and I'm just going to click on a cell somewhere, and I'm going to paste that data in. And when I do that, I get two columns of numbers. The first is the time in milliseconds. The second is sort of like the amplitude of the wave in millivolts. So the bigger the wave, the bigger the reading in millivolts. Okay, and what I want to do here is I actually want to like insert a column between these two to put the time in seconds rather than milliseconds. So I click here on column C, so the whole thing's highlighted. I right click and choose insert, and it gives me a little column between the two. In here, next to the zero milliseconds row, uh, cell there, I'm going to click there, I'm going to put enter, sorry not enter, equals, so the computer knows I'm putting this formula in. I'm going to click on the millisecond cell, and then I'm going to divide by a thousand. Because of course there's 1000 milliseconds in a second, so dividing the millisecond time by a thousand will change it into seconds. Hit enter, and surprisingly enough, 0 milliseconds is the same as 0 seconds, who would have guessed? 
Um, what I'd like to do now is fill down that formula, but I'm not going to like click and drag like we looked at before because there's basically, even for a tenth of a second, there's 4,800 individual bits of data here. And to actually click and drag all the way down will take several minutes. So I'm going to do a, something a bit trickier. Take my cursor, move it to the corner of the cell till it turns to a little black cross like that. Whoops. And double click. And that will fill down right to the bottom of the uh, column without having to click and drag. Okay, sweet. So now, in these two columns here, I have the time in seconds on the left, which is what I wanted, and the amplitude on the right. So now it's almost ready to go into Logger Pro. But the last thing I have to do, and again, it's a bit fiddly, I have to get rid of those top three rows, because if I paste them into Logger Pro, it's going to be, I'll have two bits that are empty, and one bit that has words in it, and they'll make the computer shit itself, which we don't want. So basically, i got to delete these. So click on the first row that's not what I want, and drag up so it all becomes highlighted. Then right click and choose delete and it'll get rid of those rows. And then I want to select these two columns. So not the furthest left one because that's time in milliseconds, which I didn't want. Highlight those two columns, right click and choose copy. Now go into Logger Pro. You'll have a space here where graphs go. You'll have an empty space on the side for tables of data. And I've clicked in the top left-hand cell there. Once I've done that, right-click and choose Paste. And it dumps the whole lot of data in, and it draws a graph based on that. Now, that graph should look like what we saw on the oscilloscope screen, but it doesn't at the moment. And that's because the X window here is set to go from 0 seconds all the way up to 10 seconds. And our data only goes for a tenth of a second, so we're basically using only 1% of the screen space, so of course it's going to be jammed up. But it's easy fixed. I put my cursor over that area, I right click, I choose graph options, and when I get the screen here, there's a whole bunch of different things here. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do one thing first, which is click on connect points. I'm going to go OK. Now, as you can see, it hasn't done anything yet, but what I then want to do is click auto scale. So right click on there again, choose auto scale, and then go across and choose auto scale again. Okay, now that's given me basically the same screen that I had on the oscilloscope. If you compare those two, it's the same thing. And what choosing that connect points thing did was they basically put a dot for every data value from the oscilloscope. If you just have the dots by themselves, it looks a little bit dicky. So by clicking connect points, it's joined them up with straight lines to make what's more like a graph. Okay, so now that we have this data in Logger Pro, I can now run, start writing some analysis stuff on it, which will be the part of the next video. Alright, done.